Hey guys, well as you can see I'm back. I've been out for several weeks uh, traveling in the US but I'm really really psyched to get going again. A lot of tutorials lined up and uh, today we're going to start with a gaming prop that's going to be one of a series of videos and uh, before we jump into today's video uh, just a general comment. I've been getting questions about the t-shirts that I wear. I'm a kind of a t-shirt geek and uh, you know I enjoy that and people have asked me okay if I send over a t-shirt from our state in the US or our bar or restaurant or whatever would you wear it on screen okay well uh, find details below if you want to do that and uh, you know if they're not completely horrible I'll certainly wear them on screen okay so that said uh, let's uh, look at our tutorial for today we're going to do a very, very low poly uh, game prop. It's going to be a, uh, a sewer cover and uh, we're going to use Photoshop. We're going to use Substance Painter and we're going to use Maya. And it is a very basic one and I specifically have been asked to do so. And that said, let's uh, jump in and check it out. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, so here we go. Uh, we are going to uh, create our first uh, game prop in a series of game props that we're going to be doing. And this one is going to be extremely simple as I got the request to do so. And I'm going to show you the workflow going from Maya using Substance Painter for texturing and finishing that up so it's ready to go into a game engine. Okay, so a manhole cover. Now, uh, because we're talking about a prop that is uh, somewhere in the background, it's not really important and, you know, preferably you shouldn't even notice it really in a game uh, unless it's done poorly. So for that reason, we want to keep this extremely low poly and we're going to add all the details that we need uh, through texturing. Okay, so we're going to take a polygon cube. We're going to hit R. We're going to scale that up, push that down. This is basically good. And as we don't need the face on the bottom right there, we're going to right click on the face and hit delete. Okay. Now you can even consider getting rid of the side faces if you like. Uh, but if you want to have your manhole cover slightly raised above the street level, uh, so you see that little edge, you want to keep them in. Okay. So basically, you've got one, two, three, four, and five faces in total. So this can be considered extremely low poly, right? Now, this is basically our model. So we're going to go into object mode. We're going to quickly UV this. UV will do uh, an automatic projection. That's fine. UV, UV editor. And we'll just quickly stitch this together. Let's see which one is our top. It looks like it's this one. So we're going to click on that. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to W. I'm going to move that over. I'm going to right click, go to edge. That edge corresponds with that one. So I'm going to select it, go to move and so. And if I now right click and go to shell, you can see I got the whole thing. Okay. We're going to go to polygons and layout to get it nice and center. And we're good to go. Okay. So I'm going to right click in object mode. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go up to File, Export Selection, Option Box. I want to export this as an OBJ. So I'm going to go down to OBJ Export, scroll all the way down and click on Export Selection. And on my desktop, uh, I believe I created a folder for this. Just give me one sec. There we go, Manhole. And we'll call this Manhole OBJ. Okay, just uh, try that again with the, the caps. All right, and export. Now, if you don't have that OBJ export selection available, you need to go up to uh, Windows. You need to go to Settings Preferences and Plugin Manager. And in this list, you have something called uh, OBJ. Where is it? It's in here, trust me. I just need to find it. And you need to make sure that's activated, okay? Uh, OBJ export.mll, that's the one you need. They need to be loaded. And if you want them to load every time, you click on auto load as well, okay? 
So that is our model. It's exported as an OBJ and it is now time to go into Photoshop to create a, a stencil that we're going to use in Substance Painter. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, well we're in uh, Photoshop. I'm going to create a new file. I'll just go back one step here. So we're going to go to File and New. Now what you want to do here is you want to make sure that whatever you create is perfectly square. Okay. So we'll do 2048 by 2048, which basically uh, is uh, equal to a 2K map. And we're going to hit create. Okay, let's give that a sec. Now, what I want to do for my mantle here is I want a, a black and white um, grid pattern. And I want a text on it that says manhole or, you know, water sewer or something like that. Okay. So I have a, um, a photo that I want to use and I'll put a link below so you guys can use that as well. So I'm going to go to file. We're going to go to place embedded. I'm going to go into that little manhole um, folder that I created, if I can find it. Yeah, there we are. And there it is. All right, let's bring that in. So we're going to hold down shift and we're going to left click and drag that and we're going to bring that up, push that into the corner and bring that up to the top. Okay. So we're going to hit enter. That looks fine. Now we need to um, tweak this a little bit because we want to have our uh, text in here. So first we're going to add a new layer. Let's double click on this one to unlock that background. Hit okay. We're going to create a new layer. And that's going to be our text layer. I'm going to hit the T for text. Go in here, move that up to white. And I'm just going to start typing here. Okay, and we'll just move that layer up so we can see it. Hit Control T to uh, select it. And Shift, left click and drag. So we kind of see where we want this position. Okay, now it's centered in the middle, as you can see by that purple line. And we need to know how much black we need to get rid of. So this seems to be okay. We're gonna hit enter. We're gonna hold down the Alt key. Get this selector up here, hold the Alt key and click on it and drag it down. And as we do so, you can see that it's, uh, it's looking okay. And we're going to basically put that one in the middle of this row right here. So these two black rows. And we're going to change that text to text mode again. Hit delete. Sewer. Okay. Now we need to uh, decide whether we're happy with where they're positioned or not. So let's see, we'll do one basically in the middle right there. And yeah, I think these two are fine. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and make some space for this word right there. So we're going to select this layer. And we're going to do this selection right here. And we're going to drag select this area like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a brush, turn it to black ink. Here's our brush. Rasterize it. There we go. Make it full opacity, full flow, and a hard brush. Okay, and we're going to go in like so. And we're good. Okay. Then we're going to go into um, the section down here. Again, we're going to take a selection. That looks pretty good. We're going to take our brush once again. All right. So now that we have all that, we're going to merge the layers. So I'm going to select this guy and shift select and uh, shift control select and select all of them. Right click and go to merge layers. Okay. Now with this all done, 
go up to uh, select and uh, deselect to get rid of those marching ants. And I'm going to go to file, save as, and we're going to save this out as a PSD. And let's call this our manhole stencil. All right. And we're going to use that later. Okay. So let's save that. There we go. And now it's time to jump into Substance Painter. Here we go. Okay guys, well, we're in the Substance Painter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, File and New. I'm gonna leave my template at PBR Metal Rough. And for my mesh, I'm gonna go in, select, and I am going to go back to my desktop. Manhole, that's my OBJ. There we go, got that selected. I'm going to leave this at DirectX. I'm going to set the map size to 2K and I have nothing created uh, just uh, yet. So I'm going to leave this empty and we're going to hit OK. All right now, as we do so, you can see here is our very simple basic manhole model. And we're going to start off by baking the initial maps. So, OK, so we're going to go in to uh, bake textures. Here we go. And we're going to leave everything selected. I'm going to set this to 2K. We don't have any uh, high poly models or cages or anything like that that we've created. So we're going to leave that all alone. And we're just going to simply bake the maps. Okay. Now, when you do it this way and you select everything, you will get some error messages down here, but don't worry about that too much. It's because we don't have any uh, vector colors and so forth, uh, you know, set up, but that's fine. This is just enough to create our initial normal map, uh, world space, and so forth, and our I mean occlusion, etc. All right. So now that we have that, we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna go to view and reset user interface. So we're all on the same page, and it's time to put up a base material. Okay. So we can either use a material or a smart material. Let's go with the smart material. And let's see what we've got here. Okay, we're gonna go in and let's type in either iron or steel. This looks like old iron, sounds perfect. So we're gonna left click and drag that. And as we only have one texture set right here, I can just drag that in and release that right there. Okay, we'll go in and have a look doesn't look too bad. It's a bit uh, rough. So we're going to go in and tweak it a little bit. We're going to take that drop down menu. Let's see, we're going to go into these edges. We're not going to deal with the color too much. Let's see if we can do something to make it less rough. Hopefully you guys can see this. Here we have a roughness slider. That one doesn't do that much. We have a metallic look. We don't want it to be too shiny, so we're gonna leave that alone. You can see we've got our color, our height, our roughness turned on. So here again, you know, you can tweak that. We're gonna go into the iron right there. And let's see if there's anything we want to change there. Uh, let's try the UV scale, okay? You can see that repetition going on straight away. That's something we don't want. So let's see, we'll leave it at that, okay? We're gonna uh, apply our stencil and see how that looks, okay? Because I think it will turn out just fine. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna position this correctly so that we can actually apply the stencil. So we're gonna uh, hold down Alt, left click to move it until it's basically flat. But what you do is you hold down the Shift key so it snaps, okay? So now you know that it's perfectly in there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the folder on the other screen where I uh, put that, um, that um, stencil. Okay, so hang on. Okay, so I have that on my other screen right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my uh, alphas right here. I'm gonna left click on that PSD file and I'm gonna drag that in. And I'm just gonna drop that in this area right here. And when I do that, it's gonna ask me a couple of things, right? Now here I can go in and add resources, but I already dragged it in, so that's fine. Uh, I have my manhole stencil PSD, okay? 
Now here you can go in and you can say, okay, I wanna use it as an alpha and so forth. We'll use alpha. And down here, uh, let's see what else we can do is we will use it for the current session uh, and hit import, okay? Now there it is, there's our water sewer. So what we need to do is we need to create a new layer so we can actually apply this. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna go to add a layer, okay? Now, once we've done that, make sure you have it selected, which is obviously very important. And we're gonna go into our brush right here, and we're gonna make sure that our stencil is available, okay? So here you got that stencil. We're gonna left click and we're gonna drag and we're gonna drop that here. And that makes our stencil projected. And you can see that we can now move the, um, what's it called? Move the uh, pattern in the back there. And we need to position it in a way that suits our needs, okay? So I'm just kind of looking at how far to zoom in or out. This could actually work quite well for us. And I'm basically just left clicking and dragging, there we go. So now that we have that, we need to decide what we want. Now I could give this a uh, color and um, when I use my brush, it will create color on top of my iron, but I don't want that. I want to create height difference, okay? So we need to go in and I'm gonna turn off my color. I'm gonna leave height as it is. Uh, roughness is fine. Metallic maybe, but we'll see. So we're gonna go into height first and I want this to be a negative value. So let's give this a try. We'll go into our brush settings. That's our brush size here. Let's see how that works. Just wanna make sure that we have a good brush and a good flow. And what we'll do is we'll go into our brushes because I want to use my default. DEF, default brush hard. That's fine. We'll go in, increase the size a bit. And there we go. And as, you, as we go over it, you can see that that's showing up on our model, but it's not extreme enough, okay? So I'm gonna hit Control Z to go back. We're gonna go back into our height. Let's push that way up. Let's see what we get. That's basically what we want. Maybe even a bit more than that. Hit Control Z one more time. We'll push that up. That looks very nice. So let's push that all the way in. And it looks looking all right. Make sure we don't forget anything. I think this looks nice. And then if we like, we can go in, turn the height off, roughness off, metal off, and we'll throw color back on. And we don't want a white, let's try something black. Okay, let's give this a try and see what we get. And that will give some nice contrast as well. So let's uh, push that in there. Uh, you don't wanna be too clean about it because after all, it is a manhole cover, all right? So now we're gonna shut down that uh, stencil and let's go in and have a look. Okay, that looks quite cool. Okay, so now if you like, you can kind of grunge it up a little bit. So what we can do is we can go in and create an additional layer right there. And then we have a brush selected, uh, our default hard. Let's go with a softer brush. And we're gonna go in and uh, let's see, make that nice and large brush. There we go. We're gonna decrease the flow quite a bit because we don't want it to be too obvious. 
maybe something like this. And then what we can do is we can go in, go to the color tab, and instead of that black, maybe you know get something kind of greenish, and just kind of see how that works out. Now, once I go over that once, you can see it's kind of too much. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna decrease that flow. All right. We want some very, very faint green going on there. And then maybe mix that up a little bit and take some uh, brown maybe. Okay, not bad. And once you're happy, what you can do is go into render mode. And obviously you wouldn't normally render this in Substance Painter. You would probably use it for your game, okay? But I just want to give you an idea what this looks like. And I did videos on how to export your textures from Substance Painter for use in other applications. But for now, I'll show you what it looks like when we render it here, okay? So render render mode, you can see it's rendering right now. It's actually already done, but that's fine. We're gonna increase the minimum samples to let's say about 130. Uh, we're gonna increase time as well, so it doesn't, it's not limited there. And uh, let's see, we're gonna change our environment map to something else. Let's try this right here. That shouldn't take too long. Looks like I didn't select it. Or did I? Oh, it's just taking a while. Sorry about that. Okay, let's try this one. It doesn't seem to want to uh, take that up. I'm gonna rotate this because I want you to see the light that's going on there. Let's change that up. Let's try this one. There you go, that looks much better. All right. So now that we have that, we are going to do a little bit of rotation just to see if we can get some lighting going on there. Yeah, that looks okay. Dome's fine. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, and that's basically all there's to it. Okay, so let's uh, have that uh, finish up. And then you have an extremely simple and a very, very low poly uh, game prop that you can use, okay? Okay, one more thing we can do if we like, we can uh, choose clear color. And by doing so, you see that you know, um, the background is less uh, present, if you will. We can kind of push that towards any color we want. I think this is fine. Let's see what else. You can do some, uh, some post effects here if you like, but that's not really relevant right now, okay? So uh, although it's still rendering, oh, hang on, let's get back in here. Uh, this is basically it. And um, like I said, I'll put a link below so you can see how you can uh, export your uh, textures that you've created in Substance Painter. Uh, out of Substance Painter for use in, for example, a game engine and so forth, okay? So let's uh, hang on until the render's done. And that said, thank you guys for watching and love to see you guys again, bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.